in relation with the many, the most weak countries, mark the word weak countries, a radio transmitter can be a more effective form of pressure than a squadron of B-52 bombers. And I'm going to explain what a B-52 bomber is capable of. Despite its capacity carrying the 20 nuclear uh, missiles, the fact that it can fly from Washington to, to Peking, the fact that it can carry 20, uh, it can turn mid-air, 14 of them, that's a squadron, are not equal to transmitter, the transistor radio in terms of pressure on the weak countries. Then he adds, international crises have their advantages, they frighten the weak, but star and inspire, or aspire, yeah, inspire the strong. One of members, I would pray that all of us aspire to have our country strong, so that crises don't intimidate us, but rather inspire us. Next. We are leaders as members of parliament. I believe we all know it. Leadership is a social process of influencing other people towards the achievement of set goals or objectives. Leaders must have a mindset that would encourage others to realize their capabilities. Leadership is a process through which the leader directs the institution by applying their values, underline, beliefs, ethics, knowledge, and skills. Values. A person that is spiritually starved is a danger to himself or herself and society. Next. What is, it, what is said about leadership? First, at by Grace Moore says, you manage things, you lead people. Not papers, you lead people. Leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. Warren Bennis. Before you are a leader, success is only about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is about growing others. A leader is a dealer in hope. Napoleon Bonaparte. You don't need a title to be a leader. And I know human nature, we always love those titles. But you don't need a title to be a leader. Next, parliament and the media. In modern politics and history, a parliament is a legislative body of government. I don't have to go into these details. My predecessor has done it, and others I'm sure have talked about it. Generally, a modern parliament has three functions, representing the electorate, making laws, and overseeing the government via hearings and inquiries. But I want to add here that a member of parliament is also a hunter. You hunt for opportunities for your constituency. You network for your constituency. Besides these formal roles, you are a hunter for opportunities. You network for opportunities. You are a bridge maker. Not a bridge over a river, but a bridge between people. Having known that, therefore, what about us and the media? The media are means of communication, communication outlets or tools used to pass on or deliver information or data. This includes print, television, radio, and other online factors. The media covers, the uh, coverage of the media is split between the state-run outlets and the private-held outlets. The media informs, entertains, and educates, among others. My observation in this country, however, 
the media has gone more on entertainment than education. And if you want to prove my point, start Thursday after 10. Every television set in this country has music. Every television set in Uganda, from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, is entertainment. As readers, you may need to think about it. Next. Parliamentarians and the media have a symbiotic relationship. In other words, you must coexist by necessity and as of necessity. Members of parliament and the institution of parliament rely upon the media to deliver their messages and, to, and opinions to the general public. And this one I know. All members of parliament understand it very well. There are those that are as a must. Even after session or even during the session, you will see them on the screen. There are faces that we know. Every day you will see that face on the screen before a microphone. However, that's why I began with the other question. The media can make or mark. The judgment is upon you. On the other hand, the media plays an important role in monitoring the work of the members of parliament and the parliament itself that can result in a critical analysis of their work. By their very nature, parliamentary activities are public activities and as such are subject to citizens' scrutiny and assessment. The public eye is on you because they have entrusted you with their votes. And for the next five years, you are only representing them, whether you are doing it well or not. Because thanks to the seventh parliament, the law of recall was frustrated. So you are there, unshakable. It is all the more necessary in, uh, to inform them, that's the public, since Parliament holds a central position in the functioning of pluralist democracy. Actually, the basic parameter of a democracy is the existence of a Parliament. A Parliament that is effective, as you were saying. But your effectiveness is not judged from your appearance, it's judged from the work you do inside the House, the debates and in the committees, and of course holding government accountable. One must admit that generally speaking, citizens only have an approximated or vague knowledge of parliamentary work. They don't understand it. That's why in campaign somebody can promise to build a bridge and they believe him or her well knowing he or she has no resources to build a bridge. But they will believe. Such a situation is not healthy for democracy. The mass media play a central role in the flow of information from parliaments, from parliamentarians rather, to the citizens. That's the quickest way of making them know what you want them to know. The media can also hold the parliament accountable. There the media and democracy. One monitoring role. The media observes an extended environment, environment for relevant information, events, conditions, trends, and threats. It's the media that the public depends on to do that. It scans, it scans of the real world of people, status, and the potentiality, and the potential, sorry, relevant sources of information you get from the media. Publish of reports, agenda, and the threats. Reports on political, social, and economic decisions, and it also sheds light to public opinions. Next. 
facilitative role. The medium improves the quality of public life through uh, education programs that are either aired or written about. It promotes democratic forms and reforms. It serves as a glue to hold the communities together. It enhances the ability and the desire to listen to others. In other words, it promotes tolerance. Next. Radical role. The media should go to the root to the root of power. Is it root? Yes, the root of power decisions and inequality. It exposes the negative impacts upon the quality of everyday life and the health of democracy. It helps to oppose commercial or mainstream media which tend to protect the interests of the powerful and the fail to provide information that raises critical awareness and generated um, empowerment. It cultivates political advocacy that motivates engaging in the political social democracy. Critical role. It helps reach large numbers of the people and inform them on key issues ranging from policies to elections. It is an enabler for democracy. Having better educated voters would, learn, would lead to a more legitimate government. But it can also be an activist. It, it, when it's an activist, it aims to give an equal voice to all interests. It focuses on increasing the population's media literacy, uh, literacy rate to make the people more critical of the news they consume. Next, uh -huh. feminist law. Distinguishing between the public and the private information that underpins how we define valuable or appropriate news content is also a gendered concept. Media cannot be considered truly inclusive or democratic if it continues relying on masculine concepts of impartiality and objectivity. In conclusion, Madam Chair, Parliament comes from the French word parler, which means to talk. So people must talk in the House. A Parliament is a group of elected representatives with the power to make laws. The media has the power to tell the society's stories and thereby influencing the thinking, beliefs, and behavior. A good working relationship between the parliament and the media is a necessity in a multi-party system in which the ultimate beneficiary is the citizen to whom both entities must be accountable. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much, General, and thank you for keeping time.